We're going to um, move away from the message that we've been bringing on, on Sundays. And we're moving into the gospel message of Jesus Christ this morning. And we've been preaching and speaking about us being kings and priests and how we are called by God to prophesy and decree. And one of the purposes of why we do these things is, is as a witness to those that are still out in darkness. And, and recently, someone that I love dearly went out of this life without Christ. And if and Jean had to get on to me because it was getting me so bad because I've been to hell one time and it's more horrifying, more terrifying. The words, words fail to describe the horror of hell. Ricky's seen into that. I have. Others have. It is... It, 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 hell is full of terror. Yes, it is. Fear is just permeates the whole entire atmosphere. Yet at the same time, people are cursing God. That's right. Cursing Him. Cursing Him. Why do you send me to this place? And God didn't send none of them there. Right. They chose to go there. Yeah. However, whatever way they chose to go there, just by saying, I don't want you. I don't believe in you. Go away from me. Leave me alone. And so God finally, finally, finally honors their decision. He honors their decision. This message today is, the title of it is, The Truth That Sets You Free. Amen. The Truth That Sets You Free. Genesis 1.1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. You believe that? Say amen. 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 Yes. John 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning, say in the beginning, in the beginning, was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. See, some denominations or cults, they'll put one single letter in there, and they'll say the Word was a God. Instead of with God, it says the Word, He was a God. In other words, one of many. That's what the Pope is doing right now. That's right. Saying that all religions are the same. They're not. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. I can say unequivocally, ladies and gentlemen, God loves every one of you. And God loved those that were going to hell. Amen. He says He loves sinners. He hates the sin that sends them there. But the Bible is very clear. In Hebrews it tells us that God would not that any perish but that all come to repentance and acknowledging God. You know, we've got two monuments out here. We call them the Ten Commandments, and then we've got a little, uh, th uh, uh, what do you call that thing right there? A cloth, uh, a, a banner, a, ta a, a tapestry, yeah. It's got the Ten Commandments on it. But later, when Dallas and, who'd you have helping you? Somebody? Hubert, and Rick, yeah. Putting the letters on and everything, and that we put they was out there putting it up. We got videos and pictures of it, and Hubert started counting the Ten Commandments. Well, we didn't have but nine. <laughs> I mean, how how could I mean it's poured in concrete? How in the world could you do that? But later on, I said, "Oh God, you're amazing! You're amazing!" Because. There's, out of the Ten Commandments, they're on there. When God gave them to Moses, they were on two different stone tablets. And I've wrestled over this in years past, whether how many was on this stone tablet and how many were on that. And I've seen and looking up through the Internet that some people, well, there's four on this because these first four have to do with God. And the other six are on this second commandment. I mean, second stone tablet. But as I begin to, the Holy Spirit said, look at your hands and look at your fingers. There's five on each one, supposed to be. You know, and same thing with your toes. One is the work of life, and the other is the path of life. And there was all to be guided by the Ten Commandments. That's why you're constructed and built like you are, because you're supposed to be a walking picture of the living God and what the moral code that He gave us. But what was so remarkable to me, now there's Ten Commandments out there now. Because I had to build a third concrete monument that's under the bottom. Because I want to show you something. How many, can, can everybody see this over here? I don't know. It may fall off the wall. 
Well, I'm going to take it off the wall. Uh, come here, Ricky. <laughs> I want to show you something. <laughs> okay, I, yeah, I'm, I was... Hey. Thank you, sir. There, there, there's a use for tall people for some. <laughs> but there's there's a connector scripture on these Ten Commandments that connect that actually connected between one stone that represents all the things of God and the others that represents all the things having to do with man, and it's the fifth commandment, and that was the one that got left off. And afterwards, thinking about it, I realized, Lord, it was not, it's not a mistake. When they put this thing together, they thought, Dallas and them thought they had it all together, all ten of them on there. And Hubert, again, you know you got to watch this guy. So, yeah, he really does. He's thinking all the time. He might seem quiet, he ain't. <laughs> but anyway, the first one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make a graven image or let something else be what you look to as being God. It can be money. It can be family. It can be kids. It can be uh, jobs. It can be any kind of thing that you put up in God's place. Yes, it can. And then number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And number four, thou shalt remember the Sabbath day, the Sabbath to keep it holy. In other words, you've got to put one day out of the week where you worship God. Amen. And it doesn't have to be Sunday. In the Jewish culture, it's Sabbath or Saturday. And so one day out of the week, out of your busy schedule, you're supposed to pull apart and go with your family to a place to honor and worship God. Amen? Amen. But then the fifth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother. And it goes on, it's not on here, but it says, and it's not out there either, but it says, honor thy father and thy mother. It's the first commandment with promise that your days may be long upon the earth. And it's the connector between God and these other five over here. It really is a connector. Because if you will honor God the way you're supposed to, then God says, I will bless you with all these others also. And I will work a work in your life so that you don't murder people, you don't commit adultery, you don't break or steal, and you don't bear false witness or lie, and you don't covet what does not belong to you. When you look at your hands and you hold your, hand, hold your hands out in front of you, and you look and if you got your palms up, there's thumbs out on both sides. Well, when you put your hands together, that's the two. One says, thou shalt, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the last one is, thou shalt not covet. That means don't covet what not belongs to you. God is God and we're not, right? Amen. And we're to love God with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. Jesus said, Jesus said all of these are put together in that. Two statements. That's why there's two different stones. And when I, one day after we'd gotten through Dallas and then they went and built the, another monument and put the fifth one down at the bottom. And I realized he was telling me something. The fifth one is the connector between God and humanity in our relationships, our honor, our respect. Are children to respect their parents? Yes. Do they sometimes do not do it? Yes. Yes and no. I heard yeses and I heard noes. <laughs> All right, tall man. Where'd he go? He had to go to work. He had to go to work. All right, Daryl, come here. I need another person to put it back up there because we do want it to keep stay up there. Hubert, he's shorter than me. <laughs> okay, so all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. This is speaking of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Now there's a reason why I've deviated here a little bit to pull down this banner and bring it out in front this morning because we're going to talk about this and what God, how God uses this to bring people to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Psalms 14 1 says, The fool, say the fool, has said in his heart, There is no God. That was my verse for about 10 years. Now, I was talking to little Ricky this morning. I said, little Ricky, I said, we were standing behind the t TV. And I said, are you saved? Are you really saved? And he was, he said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, no, Ricky, I'm serious. 
are you saved? Well, yes, yes, sir. Because I stopped him. He was fixing to walk on. You know, kids don't like a serious question. They avoid that, you know. Don't, ah, don't put the spotlight on me. And so, uh, but I did. I wanted to know. And I, I said, are you actually and really truly saved? He said, yes, sir. I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I got baptized and everything. I said, well, Ricky, I did that too when I was uh, 12 years old. But then I walked away from it when I got grown. And I became a hardcore atheist. atheist and I said, there's no God. There's not a God. There's no real God. When you die, you rot, and that's it. There's no God. Show me the proof of it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when God created the universe, there is a God, by the way, I found out. And uh, people was going to say, you're going to be a preacher. I said, no, I'm not. Well, I found out later at my mama's funeral. Uh, Great Aunt Eva at 106 years old pats me on the leg beside me. My mama died in 1997. She was about 76 years old. And uh, Great Aunt Eva at 106 pats me on the leg and says, Oh, your mama's so proud of you when you were born. Brought you back from Fort Bend in Georgia where you was born. And she was showing you around to all the family. And I prayed for you as a newborn baby that, Lord, let this baby boy grow up and be a preacher. We don't have a preacher in the family. <laughs> No, no kidding. She told me that. My own mama never told me that. If somebody's praying for you and you're in rebellion, you might as well go throw, throw up your hands and surrender because you're going to go between hell and rock place, I mean tight place. You're going to go through all kind of things till you do like the prodigal and say, Lord God, forgive me. I will obey. I will surrender my life. Thank God for people that pray for you. Amen. That opens the blind eyes because I became totally blind. I swallowed the tripe of the devil, the lie of the devil. See, God, when He created the universe, ladies and gentlemen, He created it. Listen to me. This is important. He created the universe in such a way that you can't use the telescope or the microscope and find God, actually find God Himself. That's right. What do you find and see scattered everywhere in everything of the universe? You see footprints. You ever walk through the forest or somewhere or go up next to a creek bank or something and you look down there and there's little uh, bird footprints tracks or you look on a trail and you see there's a deer track or a hog track or maybe a squirrel footprint or something. You didn't see the animal but you see where they had been. Well, all over creation, that's what we actually see, is the hand of God everywhere, in everything, in everything. You don't see God. You will not see God, not anywhere, whether you're looking through the telescope at the universe or looking at the microscope or the tiny microbe, you will not see actual God. He did it on purpose, ladies and gentlemen, because He requires F-A-I-T-H. What is that? Faith. He requires faith. And, and the basis for which you can have faith is truth. Say truth. 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 So it says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There's none that doeth good. So what is it? The Holy Bible of the Jews and Christians say that there is a God and those that don't believe it are fools. Amen. I swallowed the tripe of the devil. Back in the 60s, there was a saying, and later they made two movies of it. They said, God is dead, there is no God. Y'all ever seen one of those movies, yeah. God is Dead? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, that was just a saying in the 60s. And I was getting really, really skeptical, skeptical about the truth. Is there a God after all? Now, my mama had me in church every time the doors was open. Sure enough, my mama was uh, Debbie's uh, Sunday school teacher. And I got a picture. I've been threatening to blackmail her with it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> at an Easter egg hunt at my mama's house, at my house. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I had to just throw that in there, Debbie. I did. <laughs> Woo! They're pushing eggs with their nose on the ground. And I got a, my mama took pictures, and I got a picture with, well, anyway, never mind. <laughs> Debbie's rolling an egg with her nose, so I'll leave it at that anyway. All right, what, which is it? Is it true or is it false? 
is there all this religious stuff? Are we just having a meeting? Right. Or are we just coming together and saying hey to each other and hugging and shaking hands? Or just, you know, and the preacher's just in it to steal your money. You know, that's what all the world says. Man, if I find a penny on the floor in here, I don't put it in my pocket. That's God's money. I take it in there and it goes in the safe. Or You know, I leave that to somebody else. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole except to pick it up. Oh, no. How can I know what is the real truth? Because I just told you, you will not find God anywhere as far as looking through some instrument, whether it's the macro or the micro. You won't find God. But what you do see, oh, what you do see. I'll give you an illustration in a minute. Is there a way to find out? Oh, yeah. Because we're all here today because we, did, we found out, right? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes, there is. When we look at all the religions of this world, we discover that they contradict each other in major truths and areas. And when I went into my atheism, I had begun studying all religions on earth. Is there, is there one that's the real truth? Now, I was being taken to a Christian church, a Baptist church, where as far as salvation is concerned, they preach that. Yes, they do. Many times just exclusively to everything else in this in the Bible. Right. Oh, anyway, anyway. So these other religions, they do contradict themselves. They're not all the same like the Pope says. They all always lead to God. Yeah, well, always will have everybody in, on earth answer to God one day. And everybody who's ever lived from Adam and Eve right on, everybody will one day, God will get His honor and He will get His glory. Everybody is going to bow their knee to the Lord Jesus Christ, including all angels, including the devil himself. Everyone will bow and honor the Son. Yes, they will. A dictionary description of the word truth means... The quality or state of being true, that which is true or in accordance with fact or and reality. That's what truth is, ladies and gentlemen. It's actual facts that are controversial. Now, this wooden floor that we've got here today, we've got linoleum in a moment. Did, was that a truthful statement? No. no. What's under that vinyl flooring? Concrete. Concrete. Right. Oh. Concrete. Truth. The walls are wooden, got sheetrock on them, but that's concrete. Now, I could say it's wood all I wanted to, but that'd be a lie, wouldn't it? Yeah. We go by what is truth. In some religions, if some religion is declaring to the world that it's the real religion, then all of its statements must be verifiable by reputable judges of the understanding both of the words and of the seen facts of the universe. See, when it comes to spiritual things, they say, oh, well, you can't figure none of that out. That's just, it's just so arbitrary. You can't know what's really going on. No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. By the books and the things that they've written and the beliefs that they believe in. Have you ever believed a lie? Yeah. Yes. We've all believed a lie. Everybody has. Everybody does. Truth, though, is what sets us free. And sometimes we don't like the truth. As a matter of fact, sometimes people hate the truth. Amen. They hate the truth. Want to kill you when you tell them the truth. Islam, it is full of gross contradictions. Muhammad started out almost as a Christian. I don't know if you knew that. And the first beginnings of the Quran speak all about Abraham and his children and everything like that. But then it's, there's a switch over. And then it has become the most evil, deadly religion on earth. They promote their religion by killing people. You either accept or we, we kill you. Mm, oh, don't you want to join that religion? Uh, uh Hinduism. In Hinduism, everything's a god. In Buddhism, you're the god. I've studied all these before. I've looked into them, see if there was truth in them. There's not. There's not. 
Oh, don't, don't get me wrong. There's some truth in every one of those religions. There is. Or nobody would believe it. There is some truth in there. The devil's not stupid, ladies and gentlemen. He created all these religions, and he knew if there wasn't some truth in there, nobody would believe it. So they always got some truth in there. The devil's truth, ladies and gentlemen, is kind of like rat poison. What is rat poison? It's 95% something to make the rat nice and fat and happy and everything. It's that little 5% that kills him. And that's the way religions are around the world. Christianity is not a religion, ladies and gentlemen. It's a relationship with the actual real God. Okay. Christianity is based on Judaism and is true in all respects, especially concerning Jesus Christ. See, I said Judaism is true in all respects except for one thing. That's the rejection of Jesus Christ. See, the Bible says the whole nation of the Jews have been given a spirit of slumber. Spirit of slumber. They're going to get woke up here real soon. All right, thus Christianity is true in all respects, including scientific knowledge. Can anybody tell me on an atomic periodic table what is a atom number one? One of you young smart people that knows these things, like you study in chemistry. And can anybody tell me what the number one atom on the atomic periodic chart is? It's called hydrogen. And what is a hydrogen atom made of? Huh? Hydrogen. Oxygen. No, that's H2O. That's hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen molecule. I mean, atom. I was smart. <laughs> You're close, though. You're close. And, but hydrogen, in its basic form, is one proton, one single electron, and the invisible magnetic force that holds the electron to the proton. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Everything in creation. Remember I said you can't use a microscope or telescope and find God, but you can see His footprints everywhere because God signed everything in creation. One way or another, it points to the Trinity. Everything in creation. I don't care what it is that you look at. If you're looking at a tree out there, you got part of the tree that's hidden and part of the tree that's revealed in a trunk and wood and the leaves. And then later it may produce fruit or, or flowers or something. But basically a tree is the roots, the trunk, and the limbs, uh, the uh, leaves. I don't care what it is. What it is, you are spirit, soul, and body. Everything is a one and three, a one and a three and one. Everything in creation, I don't care where you look, in its basic form, it will show the Trinity. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I discovered these things. The Holy I say I discovered, the Holy Spirit showed me. Historical knowledge. Historical knowledge. Everything in this Bible is true and it can be verified verified historically throughout the world. And God has used individuals to write histories in the world. Anybody ever hear of a man named Josephus? He was there with the Roman armies and observed the destruction of Israel and wrote the book, The War of the Jews, and told all about it. And he mentions Jesus Christ, a man called of God who did miracles. Hmm. See, he wasn't a Christian. He was a Jew. But he did put, it's in there. I've got a book. I've got the book Josephus at home. And I've got that little passage underlined. Yes. Historical knowledge all over the world. Everything is coming out more and more and more. You know they've discovered. They know where Noah's Ark is now. They know where it is. And all kind of things around the world are being verified over and over and over again. And Jesus said, right before I come back, it's going to be on earth just like it was in the days of Noah. And let me tell you, the days of Noah were terrifying. The Bible says that the thoughts of every person's heart was evil all day long. Violence was The earth was full of violence. Now, yeah, the Bible says, yeah, they were still getting married. They were still building things. They were having crops. They were doing all those things that people have to do to live. But there was hell on earth before the days of the flood. And Noah was perfect in his generations, his genetic 
DNA was still human. Has anybody ever see, actually seen demons? Is anybody in here actually one, two, three, four? Anybody else seen demons? Actually seen some of these ugly creatures? Most of the time they are the most hideous looking things you have ever seen. One, I got a real, real close look at him. He was a mixture of three different species. All this was going on from Adam and Eve all the way to the flood. They were mixing all the different things. What is a minotaur? Huh? Half bull, half man. Half what? Half bull, half man. Yeah, right. I mean, they, they were mixing genetics everywhere and all kinds of things. God did not create... Uh, uh, was it uh, the, what is it that, uh, Rex the big dinosaur T-Rex T -Rex. God didn't procreate him mankind did God created the uh, plant eaters yeah I, we don't have time to go into some of the discoveries about how life was back in those days. While the lifespan was nearly a thousand years and, and fruit on trees did not rot. It would come all the way up to the place, the science, Japanese scientists already proved this, under 32 pounds of pressure square inch. What's the pounds pressure, pressure per square inch right now where we are right now breathing air? What? Nope. Nope. Seven point something. It used to be before the flood, it was 32 pounds. Oh, is it? Is it 14? Am I wrong? It's way, way down from what it was over 30 some odd pounds per square inch before the flood. Do you know what happens when things are living things are put under that much pressure? Right now, you've only got uh, each one of your red blood corpuscles. This, I'm way off track, Ricky. I'm, we're north side people. We're north side people. So. Right now, you can get going and run and play or whatever. And after a while, you've run out of breath and you've got to catch your breath a minute. Not before the flood. See, right now, one of your red blood corpuscles that makes your blood red can only carry three oxygen molecules. That's all it can carry right now. You jump up. Anybody ever hear of Michael Jackson? Yes. He had what they called a hyperbaric chamber. And when you get inside a hyperbaric chamber so many minutes in a week, it makes your body come alive because of the oxygen. Oh, yes. See, this has already been proven around the world. I'm not making this up. Go on Google and you can check it out yourself. Under 30 some odd pounds per square inch pressure, your, that same red, red blood corpuscle in your body can then carry seven oxygen molecules. It goes from only carrying three, it goes to carrying seven, plus your bloodstream becomes saturated with oxygen. You would never get tired. They found out that omnivores, people, uh, animals that eat meat, today, under that much pressure, won't eat meat. There's no death or animals killing each other. Briars and thorns, and, and all animals that have poison, and snakes and spiders and bees and things like that that have poison, under 30 some odd pounds per square inch, guess what happens to the poison? Disappears. I'm not making this up, folks. This is facts of what it was like then. When God created this earth, it was glorious. It was beautiful. And Adam and Eve was the height of God's glory. Yes. And it doesn't say it in the Bible, but throughout the Bible and the Old Testament and the New Testament, every person that names the name of Jesus, you're called a child of L-I-G-H-T. When Moses came down from the mount, he had to put a veil on his face. Why? The light of God shined out from him because he'd seen God face to face. And Adam and Eve, I know by the Holy Spirit that Adam and Eve glowed like light bulbs. 
And anybody that's ever fasted and prayed long enough to be able to see beyond this veil into the spirit world around here, every single Christian looks like a walking light bulb. You are lit up. You can look at any person and say, that one's saved, that one's not, that one's not, that one's not. Because Christians have the light of the Holy Spirit inside you. You don't see it with light eyes. You see it by spirit eyes. Yes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, historical knowledge, scientific knowledge, archaeological knowledge. You ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Yes. The Essenes who were ardent Christians. They wrote all these things down, and they're still trying to decipher the gold scroll. And they've unra unrolled it, and they're seeking. Now the Jewish antiquities in Israel only allowed them to do tests in six sites. There's about 30, 40 sites. There's billions of dollars in gold and jewelry hidden somewhere in Israel. And that little gold scroll, it took them for years. Nobody would open it up because it was so fragile. And finally one man took the chance. And he opened it a little bit and cut that off. And he cut, ended up cutting it into multiple strips. Look it up on Google. You know, Google has an answer to everything. You can believe everything that's on Google, right? No, no you can't. <laughs> and you can't even believe Snopes either. Because no. Snopes is right under Soros' hand. So... But these things have been found out now because this is a time when everything is being revealed. Yes. It is being revealed. So everything with archaeology is being con the, confirming the Bible. Every day more and more things are being discovered around the world archaeologically that prove and confirm what is said in this book. Not in the books of those other religions. It's not the Bhagavad Gita. It's not the Quran. It's not uh, any of these others. The Pearl of Great Price or any of those. Judicial knowledge. Our whole government was founded and based on this book. That's why there was no other nation on earth that's been set up like the United States. Our government is a three-legged stool. You pull one leg out, it collapses. We have the judicial, the legislative, and the presidential. And it was those men that started this nation, they fled from those nations over there where there were tyrant kings that ruled the lives of people, evil and wicked kings. And they came over here and guided by the Holy Spirit. They put together a constitution that was unique in all the world. Even Israel didn't have it that way. They had a theocracy. The best government in the world. The best government in the world is not our, like our own constitutional republic. We're not a democracy, ladies and gentlemen. I know that's speaking blasphemy in some places. We are not a democracy here in the United States. We are a constitutional republic. It, the best government in the world is a benevolent king. Because a benevolent king who loves his people will do everything in his power to bless those people and that they prosper. Yes. But remember, this, there's a saying, another one of these idioms. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And what was it Edmund Burke said? All it takes for evil to prosper is for good people to do nothing. And we see it in our government. We see it all over the world, all over the place. And God says, enough is America. I'm going to put a stop to it. And he raised up a man who was not a Christian. Like King Cyrus in the Bible that God raised up and tells about in Isaiah 45 that God said, enough is enough. And he raised up a man who was not a Christian or not even a Jewish man to bring relief and blessing to the Jewish nation. And he did for the rebuilding of Jerusalem and Israel. Human functioning knowledge. This Bible knows how you are and what you are and provides the answers for what you need. Conditions of the heart knowledge. Only book on earth that has the true knowledge about what is the human condition and the, the problems of our heart. And moral truth knowledge. Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Now, if all these things bear record of the truth of Christianity above all other religions on earth, then it behooves us to pay attention to what is being, what is said about everything else that applies to our life. I discovered that. 
1979, I read a 10-year-old book called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. It had been a number one seller in that category for 10 whole years. I wouldn't touch it. That's religious. Ain't nothing in there. That religious stuff, if there was ever any truth in it, it's all lost and gone. It's nothing but a mishmash. You just can't trust none of this stuff. If it's produced by men, then it's, it's rottenness. Yeah. I, I was raised and became a very, very analytical person. As an electrician, I became a troubleshooter. I could go into jobs and places where they could not figure out how to get machinery and equipment and giant chillers and things like get them to operate. And I could spend some hours in there and walk out and have the people tell me, we've had all these big companies in here and you come in here by yourself and in three hours time you got everything working. Well, I learned how to be a troubleshooter and check, 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 check to make sure whether it was true or not. And very, as an electrician, first thing I check, is there any electricity? <laughs> <laughs> if there's no electricity, then none of it going to work, <laughs> you know? So, if it's true, if it's true, it behooves us to pay attention to it. Amen? Amen? Yes. This is especially true when the Holy Bible declares that all this on earth was originally separated from God because of sin and rebellion of the first created man and woman. Who was that? Amen. Adam and Eve. The word Adam means red. And when you put the glorious gospel light, glory light of God, the Shekinah glory of God through that red skin, he looks like pure gold. Adam and Eve didn't need clothes, ladies and gentlemen. They were clothed by the glory, the Shekinah glory of God Almighty. And they took one bite and the light shut off like that. We're, ooh, we're naked. And see, shame. Listen to me now. Why do we have clothes on today? We don't want to be naked. No, I remember that old country music guy. He says, I don't look good naked anymore. 